All right, you come back on. Praise the Lord. Praise. Blessings, blessings, blessings. This is the day the Lord has made. And we are rejoicing. We're rejoicing and we're glad in this day. Thank God for another day. Thank God for his blessings in all that he has done and all that he is doing in the body of Christ. And we give him praise and give him thanks for the great and many blessings that he has bestowed upon us just this day. God is so so good. He's so merciful. And today we're in for a treat. We want to welcome all of you. And we pray that uh, wherever you are, you're safe. As we uh, continue and on live for our interview for the day, we are excited. We got one of God's best one of his best own in the person of Pastor Mark Gray, who's uh, with us today. And uh, if we go in and out, uh, just stay with us. We've been having some technical difficulty and um, hopefully it, it will keep going where we won't have that problem anymore. Uh, Praise God. Praise God. I think we're still over here. Pastor Greg, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Bless you, Bishop. Praise God. Praise God. We hope we're still, we're still going live. I know we this thing kept blinking on my end. Amen. <laughs> Amen. These machines. Machines, yes, machines, sir. machines. <laughs> I tell you. Amen. And you think you got it together and got it down, you just don't know. But uh, praise God, praise God, we're here and we're thanking God for uh, the blessings that he's bestowed upon us in this edition of Spotlight on Ministry. Now listen, friends, we want you to uh, jump on, like and share and start your watch parties and join the conversation with us. Uh, we're going to talk to Pastor Gray in just a moment following prayer, and we want you to be a part of the conversation. Join us now, if you will, in the word of prayer. Father, we thank you for this day, your grace, your mercy. We thank you for your kindness. Thank you for life, health, and strength. Another day which we've never seen before. And we thank you now for your servant, Pastor Gray, God. We thank you for his ministry and all that he means to the body of Christ. Bless us now as we share in dialogue concerning kingdom business. And we pray that all that we say and do will be for your glory and yours alone. In Jesus name we pray, amen. And amen. thank amen. God, amen. Thank. Well, pastor, it's, we finally made it. We finally made it amen. Uh, on spotlight uh, uh, for ministry. And uh, uh, getting on this thing, I tell you, I've been going to school trying Amen. to operate <laughs> and learn how to push the right button. And even when you push the right button, it don't mean much. That's if, right. If uh, That's right. the streaming uh, don't go through and Wi-Fi and all of, listen, man, it's been it's been something. But we thank God we're here now, and we're going to join in the conversation. Uh, let me just read a little something for our audience. Uh, pastor Mark Allen Gray is the senior pastor of the Greater Shiloh Missionary Baptist Church located here in the city of Detroit. He has served as senior pastor for the last past 11 years during his tenure at Greater uh, Shiloh. He's developed several ministries that have been birthed women's ministry health ministry, food distribution, other programs and collaborations to strengthen the community. Pastor Gray serves as the second vice 
moderator of the Metropolitan Baptist District Association. Pastor Gray is the husband, is a husband and father. And in the past times, he's enjoyed studying the word of God, spending time with his family and uh, cruise in the Caribbean. <laughs> Praise God. Uh, the man of God, Pastor Mark Gray himself. Man, we bless you and we thank God uh, for your ministry. And we want to start the conversation off. Let's go back before uh, Greater Shiloh and your, your start in ministry as a minister coming up before uh, pastoring. Let's start your journey there. Give us a synopsis of your ministerial journey. Amen. God bless you, Bishop. Thank you for the opportunity to come and to share uh, on this afternoon. Yes, we, we've we been in ministry for uh, quite a while. Our ministry began uh, at the uh, Kadesh Baptist Church under the leadership of James H. Williams. And then after Pastor Williams had went on to glory uh, under the leadership of Bishop Gregory Foster. Uh, amen. And under Bishop Foster, we had be uh, been uh, ordained to preach, and we have been preaching uh, the gospel ever since. We did a lot of work at uh, Kadesh, and we learned our uh, preaching capabilities. We were trained in the study of, of uh, preaching. We were trained in how to uh, conduct ourselves in church. We were trained uh, how in every area and every aspect uh, that you would ever have to endeavor in as a uh, pastor, preacher, teacher. Uh, Bishop Foster made sure that we knew the ins and the outs of every auxiliary in the church. We served on uh, every board, amen, hallelujah, in the church. So we are quite aware of everything, how it flows, how it runs uh, in, uh, in the Baptist church. And uh, therefore that gave us great training, great opportunity. Uh, we, we studied uh, a man extensively in the word. We have been uh, building ourselves up in order to be able to teach and preach God's word uh, to God's people the way God would have us to give it through by way of the Holy Spirit. Uh, we are led, governed, and directed by the Holy Ghost. Amen. So we, we our, our tenure started out, we started out uh, humbly. Amen. We, we, we started out working. Amen. Yeah. We the BTU, a Baptist Training Union. Amen. We we did all of those things, teaching Sunday school, teaching Bible class. Uh, amen. So we 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 had to work. Amen. We did not just jump up and start preaching and 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 uh, teaching in God's church uh, without the training and the pastoring uh, overseeing of our pastor as we endeavor to. Uh, get to a level of where he felt like uh, we could be on our own. Amen. Amen. So that's kind of where it all started. Amen. Oh man, that's powerful. That's 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 something right there uh, for other young ministers to to take a listen to. That the journey just didn't start uh, being licensed and automatically going into a pulpit to pastor. No, uh, the rigorous training and the um, how long would you say when you when you look in the uh, time span of number of years uh, once you acknowledge your call and then um, being trained under those pastors did it take you to get to where you are now? Oh man, <laughs> you know I think I think Bishop Foster was in the mindset of where it says don't lay hands too quickly. <laughs> Amen. So uh, we 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 labored, we labored in the vineyard for you know I, I would say it's a summation of four, uh, five to six years. Amen. Amen. Before uh, we were even ordained, amen to uh, uh, to preach, uh, we had to do uh, we had to do the leg work. We had to do the uh, the foot work. We were foot soldiers, and we had to. Uh, do everything that uh, we could to uh, to make our ministry uh, shine. You know, people say that um, uh, your your gift will make room for you, and and, and uh, we never we never once asked uh, Bishop for opportunity to preach. Uh, the opportunities were given. 
uh, when it was our time, when, when, when he thought it was our time, or when others that would see us preaching uh, would see uh, it was our time and they would make uh, room for us for our gift. I did have my first um, outing uh, to preach was given by, uh, given to me by Pastor Gregory Simmons. Amen. I will always be in, um, in his, uh, I won't say debt, but I will always uh, love him and appreciate him uh, for the kindness that he showed to us uh, while we were yet uh, trying to learn how to preach. Uh, he gave us a platform uh, mm -hmm. quite often uh, to come and to share uh, with this congregation. So I'm indeed thankful uh, to Bishop uh, Simmons uh, for his kindness toward us when we, uh, when we were in our first stages of ministry. Oh, that's a blessing, yeah. Amen. Bishop Simmons, I mean, he's just he's just a great he's a jewel open hearted Amen. man of God, and we thank Amen. God, we thank God for him uh and, and his ministry. Well, let me ask you this, Pastor, because we are we are looking at uh a time in 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 history in not only the body of Christ but the world overall. Uh, talk to us about uh, what Greater Shallow is doing and and how you have maintained in the midst of this. I mean, we'll get to the ministries that you develop, but mm. let's immediately talk about uh, uh, how God has led you uh, to stay connected with your people and keep them, you know, on point, mm. encouraged in their faith and and continue to be supportive of ministry. Amen. Amen. Well, you know, Bishop, uh, none of us, none of us have ever passed it through a pandemic. Amen. It's all a, a learning oh, uh, process. Amen. We all, we all had to learn. We all had to readjust. We all had to realign ourselves so that we can do ministry because ministry as we know it, you know, is no longer uh, the way it, it was, amen. Uh, we yeah. cannot physically be with the people. We cannot physically share with them. We cannot physically um, uh, uh, be with them uh, during this time. So we had to come up with uh, uh, other nuances, other avenues by which we could share with them and to uh, be able to still grow uh, the body of Christ, to still nurture them and to still give them hope. Uh, during this time. So what we did was we, 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 we bowed down. And first of all, we prayed. <laughs> we asked God uh, what it is that we should do by way of the Holy Ghost, that people could be uh, enlightened, that people could be encouraged uh, during this time. So God gave us several platforms. He opened up several avenues for us that we would have prayer uh, each, each morning at 6 a.m. Uh, we would have prayer um, and then he opened it up where we would have prayer uh, 6 a.m. in the morning and 12 noon. Uh, still, we would have it virtually and we would have it uh, on the phone, you know, uh, conversations yeah. on the phone. We had uh, just developed our Bible study uh, through the airways and online. Uh, we did our preaching and our teaching uh, and our Sunday school and our Bible studies uh, virtual. Amen. So we had to readjust real quick. And then we established what we call Fellowship Friday, uh, where the members are able to come onto the line and to talk with one another, to share with one another, to encourage one another uh, in their struggle, you know, to uh, during this time of pandemic. So we had to come up with a lot of different ways in order for our ministry to grow uh, outside of just uh, the, you know, the four walls. We had been in church and we are doing what we thought was church, but we realized that the church now had to really become the church. We had to go outside of the walls and we developed things that would be a help uh, to the community, we had our, we still had a Bible study uh, for the children, a vacation Bible school outside of the church on the church's uh, property outside. So we still did things that were uh, neighborhood uh, conducive for the neighborhood uh, to be a blessing in the neighborhood. And, uh, you know, we, we still did things uh, that would help 
uh, the community still had the food program going or with the city of Detroit and Gleaners. Uh, they were still, people were still able to come out and, and receive food and, and uh, those types of things that would help them uh, in their struggle during this time of pandemic. Our clothes closet uh, that we have at church uh, is, was still available for people to come and to share uh, in items that uh, were free that they were mm -hmm. able to get blessed with. So we, we, we still did the work of ministry, even though ministry was different even though we had to change the way we normally did it. Meeting inside, we met outside. We had a parking lot fellowship. We had services in the lot. Uh, so, amen, we, we, we still had ministry and uh, we're still having ministry. Thank God for our ministers uh, on our ministerial staff. They bring uh, a lot of uh, different uh, nuances to our membership and to our church. And they help us tremendously, tremendously, Robin, uh, Ron Simpson uh, handles our outreach, amen. Every, every third uh, Saturday, uh, they're up at Uplift Detroit, amen. And they're giving out clothing and feeding people with a big uh, citywide barbecue. Amen. Every every third Saturday. Amen. So up on Second and Selden. Amen. Thank God for them, and thank God for the ministry. Uh, amen. Of Greater Shiloh and the ministry of Uplift Detroit. Uh, that's a blessing uh, to the neighborhood and to the uh, uh, citizens of uh, of Detroit. So it's just been a blessing to be able to help uh, and to share. Even though we are not meeting physically, we're still doing those things. Uh, spiritually and those things that are helping uh, in the community. Blessings, man. I tell you, that's 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 awesome. Listen, let, let me ask you this, because uh, where you're located, I mean, was old Black Bottom of Detroit, and <laughs> years ago before the renovations of Brewster Projects and all of that area, and uh, uh, you're, you're in a historical place and, and, and talk to us about, you know, the decision to take on uh, the pastorate at such a historic monumental ministry in our city uh, and then where you're located and, uh, and how it's been since you've been there, you know, uh, ministering to the community and outside that whole area. Just give us a little bit of that. Amen. Amen. It's been a, it's been a, it's been a challenge. Uh, it's been a yeah. challenge, but it's also been a joy. Uh, amen. To share uh, with the community, we 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 do a lot of things. Community, we have um, peace walks, and uh, we have community outreach uh, where we go out and we help uh, the community uh, financially. We help the community spiritually. Uh, we do a lot of things in the community. We have. Uh, we hold services that the community are a part of. Uh, we just try to reach out uh, to the community to be a blessing uh, unto them. Uh, this past this past uh, past winter, Amen. We we uh, partnered uh, with the um, Woodside Church, and in partnering with the Woodside Church, we handed out uh, gift cards, Amen. Uh, uh, gift cards for groceries, uh, to, uh, $50 gift cards to over 200 and some odd uh, residents in the Brewster, uh, in the Brewster home. So it, it's been a blessing. It's been a challenge, but we are trying to meet the challenge uh, with God's uh, guidance and with God's assurance and God's help uh, to try to make it a better place. Uh, you, you know, you talk about uh, it being a historical place. Amen. A lot of times when things are historical, uh, we want to do things in the vein that it's always been done. Uh, and the, like the old song says, I shall not be moved. But I believe that the church uh, has to be a moving place. It, it, it's not an entity that is dead. It's an entity that is on the move. And, and by it moving, therefore, it's able to bring others into, uh, into the place where we are. So I'm a firm believer that we need to be out there. We need to be knocking on doors. We need to be talking to people. We need to be encouraging folk uh, that we're not just historical, but we are a place that God uh, dwells and we are a secret place 
If we dwell in that secret place, God is going to make us visible in the neighborhood. So that's the way I look at it. I look at it as if God is doing a great thing. He's opening up doors for us. I like the sign that was made for us that the uh, greater Shiloh is a church with an open door. And you're able to come into it and be safe. Amen. Bless the Lord. Yes, listen, we want to welcome a couple of our IAC pastors jumped on uh, Pastor Dwight Mahone and Pastor Benjamin Barnes. Blessings Amen. to you, fellas. And uh, 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 we got a greeting in our comments, Pastor Gray from Bishop Marjorie Holt, who Amen. we're still praying for her. She's been ill, but she greets us tonight. Amen. And uh, so many others, are they're jumping on with comments and uh, John Davis, Elder Tate, blessings to you, man of God. And uh, Sister Tyra Jackson, I mean, tell, tell Pastor White, get back on if he was able <laughs> to get on. Uh, uh, but we're glad, we're glad to hear that because I, I remember as a young man uh, coming down there years ago when I was working with the, um, the state National Baptist Convention, and um, we do a lot of meetings with the youth down there uh, throughout the neighborhood, and it was such a blessing. Well, man, we we certainly we certainly applaud you uh, for what God has blessed you to do, uh, Pastor Mahone, Pastor Pastor Barnes. Y'all got a question for Pastor Gray? While we're moving on to the next phase. Yes, sir. Yeah. I have one question for Pastor Gray. Greetings, everybody. Bless you. Uh, Bless you. Hey, Pastor Gray, in light of all that's been going on, you know, we're dealing with the pandemic, we're dealing with worship outdoors. Uh, as briefly as possible, what's your take on, uh, you know, because it seems to be we're transitioning to a more contemporary church uh, in our appearance and in, in what we do and everything else. What's your take on that? Well, I believe I believe during this time or during this season, the church is really becoming the church. Um, before we did a lot of things in church, we were basically, in my mind, a man, and you all might not agree, but we did a lot more entertaining uh, than we did uh, preaching. Now it's strictly word. Amen. We mm. come on, we just preach. There ain't no singing, ain't no dancing, ain't no <laughs> shouting. We are doing the word of God. We just preach it, flat footed, yeah. unadulterated word of God, just strictly Bible. Amen. We don't have no organ playing. We don't have nobody clapping us on. Nobody saying amen. No, no shouting, no dancing. All we got is word. Amen. And, amen. I, and, I, and I like it. I like it. Amen. Amen. Because there's amen. no pretense. No, <laughs> God of my, no pretense. Amen. amen. It's just strictly Bible. Amen. You got to know that Bible because people are listening now. Amen. They're listening to the word of God. They're listening to a scriptorial understanding and knowledge that you have. They're listening. Amen. amen. We, can't, we can't just give them, you know, a little something and then hoop. Amen. We got to <laughs> give them a word. Got to give them a word. Amen. 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 Thank you, sir. Amen. Bless yeah. you. Amen. Pastor Mahone, you got a question? Uh, yes, so uh, Pastor Gray, good to see you. Good, good to see to you. See you Bless you. I, I just like to ask you a personal question. Uh, yes, sir. on this journey, ever since March last year, on this journey, you know, through the Delta, I know you lost some friends. Yes, sir. A lot of folks got sick. Was it a time uh, that you got a little weary? Mm -hmm. And after a question like Marvin gave, what in the world is going What's on? What's going on? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Pastor. Anybody that you know, if you were, if the truth be told, we all uh, became fearful. Amen. You know, the Bible says God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of a sound mind. That sounds real good. Yeah, it does. That sounds real good. But when people are dying around you and you're not able to do anything and you you really, your hands are tied, you can't help, you become fearful yourself. Yes, sir. Amen. 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 You start to wonder. You start to think. Amen. Amen. But I had to rest in the fact that I knew uh, God's track record, you know, because I became fearful. 
Yes, I started sir. thinking about myself because I said to myself, self, you got some of everything under the sun and here you are trying to uh, wrestle through a pandemic, wrestle through funerals and, and trying to get into hospitals to see people that you can't even get in to see. Slow down. Mm. Slow down. And I said, I can't slow down. I got to do what I've been called to do. I got to work the work of him that called me while it's day because night is coming. Mm. Amen. But I had to realize that night could come for me. Mm -hmm. So I mm. became fearful, but I thought about the words in Psalms 91. Blessed is the man that walketh, you know. That's Psalms 1. I always put those on there. Psalms 1, blessed is the man that walked down the counsel of the ungodly. And then Psalms 91. Yeah. Amen. Amen. He that dwells in the secret place of the most high, I put them together. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how that's how I was able to make it. All right. I was able to make it. All right. Yeah. I thank, couldn't thank have made you. it no other way. Yes, right. sir. Yes, thank you. Sir. Thank you. Well, listen, let, let me ask this. Let me turn the corner a little bit. Because you've been preaching, you've been teaching, Bible class, Sunday school, Sunday worships, just giving out the word of God with instruction no compromise, uh, how would you estimate and how you seeing your congregation respond to this time, this season, uh, even before the pandemic and even during the pandemic, whether or not the word of God has really lodged in their hearts and they really caught it and they really able to anchor themselves in the word like they should, because at this point, like you said, we, we can't even do funerals. We can't visit the sick like we normally would do. We can't comfort the bereaved families and even in our own families and households. I mean, we're, we're so limited, our hands are tied to show the malevolence and the love that we normally would. And, and I, I would question whether or not the people I learned, you know, every tub got to stand on its own bottom. Now, all that preaching you've done, now they got to take that word and live it. I mean, Amen. how would you gauge uh, in the response and the reaction or the maturity and growth in your ministry? Amen. Uh, Bishop, I'm going to tell you, um, we, have, we have seen tremendous growth. And I don't just uh, say this, uh, you know, uh, because it's me. It's not me. Uh, amen. It's the Holy Spirit. It's, it's, it's the love that the people have for God. Uh, our church has grown tremendously. The people have grown. The people have begun to stand up. The people have begun to uh, 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 let the light of God shine. Uh, they are taking on more responsibility. Uh, when we first started, we were doing all the praying. We were doing all the, you know, teaching and uh, everything now, hallelujah, uh, they're doing the praying. We have the prayer calls. I open it up and they pray. <laughs> Amen. Mm. I don't have to do all the praying. They, 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 they do the praying. That's Amen. It. They do the Sunday school. They, they're teaching the Sunday school class. Amen. Mm. Amen. The only thing I do is uh, uh, the Bible study and then uh, sometimes our ministers, amen, our ministers there uh, uh, will help. Uh, they will do the Bible study. Amen. So it has been a tremendous uh, blessing uh, to see how God has moved on our congregation, uh, that they have become, they've got off their stools of do nothing and started doing something. Amen. Yeah. They have become uh, uh, faithful uh, to their engagement, exemplary uh, in their deportments. Amen. And they're just doing a wonderful, a wonderful job. I brag on them. Amen. I love them because they are now allowing the Holy Spirit to lead them. They're not letting people lead them. They're not letting uh, organizations or, or different uh, auxiliaries in the church lead them. They're letting the Spirit of God lead them. Amen. And they're letting God talk to them and not letting somebody else talk to them. God is speaking to them and through them. Amen. Mm -hmm. I don't even have to say nothing. Mm -hmm. and the Holy right. Spirit just talks. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Listen, Hallelujah. listen, Catherine Collins 
She said, listen, our church is also where the, the people are stepping up. Amen. They're, they're stepping up to the plate. And uh, Amen. of course, John Davis is saying the growth has been through the Holy Spirit and the people yes. are becoming creative, courageous, and reaching out to members of the congregation. And that's what you want. I, I'm Amen. so glad to hear that. You know, uh, each right. one get one. Of this. It's the sheep begat mm -hmm. sheep. So, That's right, and and the shepherd. You once they get them in there, uh, uh, you can minister to them. And then uh, D. Davis Jr. He sends up hands of praise. And, uh, so it's a blessing, man, to hear that because uh, in talking to so many pastors, you know they they're discouraged because uh, some of them uh, are saying, you know, they they're trying to reach people where they are, you know, in their faith. Right. And uh, of course, we all got a measure of it. And and some people don't really realize the more words you hear, mm -hmm. the more it can help your faith. Faith Amen. coming by hearing and hearing. hearing the word of God. And so, uh, like you said, thank God, all of the performance is gone. The flesh parade is dead. And they've got to be satisfied with just the word of God. Just the word. Just and the word. Compromise word of God. Well, let me Amen. ask you this, Pastor. Uh, 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 in, in viewing where we are and, and making plans for greater shallow uh, for the future as we navigate our way through this time in this pandemic, uh, uh, what is God saying to you far as vision and how to move forward because you got to keep moving you know, Amen. and keep Amen. the people uh, uh, of mind on the Lord Jesus Christ and pointing them because we say, follow me as I follow Christ. Follow you know, Christ. you know how people Amen. are there, sign seekers. Oh, yeah. They want to know Amen. where we going and how we going to get there. <laughs> Amen. 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 Well, we just, we, we, we're basically, we're basically keeping, uh, keeping the church in view. Uh, we're letting them know that, yes, yes, one day we will get back into the sanctuary. Uh, amen. We want to get back in there. Well, we want to get back in there when it's safe, uh, when we know that uh, we're able to come together to share uh, with one another and, and uh, just, you know, just kind of getting back the mindset uh, that, 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 uh, that the building is not really the church. That was one of the hardest things to do is to get people to understand that that's just the building. The church is, is the people. The people are the church. We're what make up the church. If you have no building, you still got church. Amen. So we had to get them to realize that, you know, that they are the church and that the church is still has to roll on. But we're doing things, you know, we're doing things in our building uh, you know, we, we we met with some challenges in our building, but we are uh, by way of Holy Spirit and the members. We are bringing things together. We're trying to build up, uh, take care of the things that are wrong with the church, uh, physical things, and uh, try to get it back in working order, uh, so that we can, you know, when it when God sees fit for us to come back together, we'll be able to come back together and to be able to worship uh, one with another. So that, you know, that's kind of where we are. We're just keeping the vision of God before the people that God wants a glorious church outside of the four walls. He wants us mm -hmm. to still represent him, even though we're not in a building. Amen. Yeah. yeah so that, yeah, that's yeah. what we're kind of keeping before the people. Yeah, that's that's a blessing, man. I, I tell you, because uh, sometimes people can be they come to church. And and uh, my grandfather used to say they come to church, spend all that time at church, and miss church. Then miss you church. They, you, you get outside on the parking lot, and you ask them, "What did the preacher preach?" They don't even remember. I don't know, but he they, showed preached. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he so did it. I can't remember what he said. Uh, but 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 as we look at. The body of Christ now, I, I believe people are, are hungry. There's, there's a thirst for the word of God. Mm. And so 
uh, uh, thank God for men and women uh, 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 such as yourself who don't take it for granted, don't take it light. We mm -hmm. have an awesome task, an awesome responsibility to do what Jesus said that we, we like he told Peter, if you love me, feed my sheep. Feed my sheep. So, so that, that's just good news that the, uh, uh, the greater shallow sheep are being fed Amen. without missing a meal. Thank Amen. God. Uh, <laughs> they're not suffering from spiritual malnutrition. Amen. They're, they're Amen. getting the word. They're getting all they need to sustain yes, them through this time. So, so, so as God helps us to navigate through this, uh, we, we, we're in what's called the, the virtual church and, uh, 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 and, and we own uh, conference calls and we got to teach this way. We got to pray and reach out to people this way. And as the Lord will have it, as you said, if we're able to get back together, uh, 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 how do you see uh, uh, greater shallow coming back. You know, everybody talking about. I want the choir back. I want the praise team back. I want. I want this. I want that. Uh, we'll start probably still be dealing with uh, a measure of social distancing and and uh, making sure that we sanitize and uh, it, it's going to be work. Uh, uh, so, are, are you all making plans now for that day? Yes, yeah, yeah. We we're making plans to uh, come back together and uh, being able to share one with another. But uh, the church, uh, as you know it, as you knew it, it's not going to be the same. Amen. It's just not. It's just not uh, because people have become comfortable, and the longer we stay uh, in in the virtual realm, uh, people are becoming even more comfortable. Why should I get up? put on clothes to go to a building to sit, uh, amen, when I could just stay here at home with my pajamas on and listen and, and church hop all day. I can go to different churches all day long. Hallelujah. And don't have to go anywhere. So we're going to have to become even more, uh, even more, um, even more sustainable. Uh, in the virtual world, because we're going to have to, you know, still reach people virtually, even our own members. Yes, sir. some of our own members. You know, it, I, you know, I, I, I hate to say this, but you know, some days I might have to. I, I, <laughs> I might, I might want to stay home, amen, and not be uh, in worship, amen. You know, I mean, let's just be real. Hey Amen. A lot of times we we you know I'm I don't I'm not a fake preacher. <laughs> Amen. Sometimes I want to stay at Bedside Baptist and, and, and allow Dr. Pillow to, to preach to me. Amen. So you know I understand how people feel and I understand what people are going through. But we, we're just trying to prepare ourselves uh for that time. When that time comes, we're trying to prepare ourselves for when we do come back together, we're trying to encourage people. Uh, amen. To keep the faith, to hold on, uh, to be encouraged that this thing is not uh, going to last always and that we will come back together. But I know that when we do come back together, it's not going to be the same. It's not going to be the same. It's not going to be the same for a while. No, you know, people are not going to be trying to run up and hug and, and kiss and they're not going to want long services and, and afternoon programs. I, Hey man, you know how we used to have church and you'd be there all day, you know, and have yes, a snack during during service. Nope, they're not gonna want to do that. Amen. Yeah. They're not Amen. gonna want to do that. Amen. So we've got to come up with ways in order to do things. And and I tell people all the time now, I say, you know, we thought that we couldn't make it unless we had an afternoon program or, or a fish fry or something to raise money, uh, amen, to help uh, the ministry. But I've come to find out and realize that God helps his own ministry. Amen. If you're a ministry of God, he's going to bless it. Amen. Amen. You ain't nothing you, I ain't sold a fish dinner and I don't know when. Amen. And the ministry is still going on. Still bills are still being paid. And, and, and God is still blessing his church. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. So I just, also, that's just the way I look at it. Yeah. <laughs> it's also a test uh, for their faith and, um, uh, their commitment to God because Amen. a lot of folk like to be seen giving. 
Amen. 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 Uh, prancing down the aisle and doing all this, those special days. We don't Amen. have that. So, no. so you have to give online or you have to Amen. fill it in. You have to cash app. So Amen. that commitment has to be to God and to the ministry, their loyalty. They, they, have, to, they have to really put up or shut up now. Yes. You know, nobody looking at you. You ain't modeling this Sunday in your new outfit. You, you, you at home. And, and, and while the preacher is preaching, you know, if they, they give the information how you can give, you know, there it is. Here we are. We're Amen. dealing with that. So thank Amen. God for, for those that are, are being loyal and obedient in the area of giving and supporting Amen. ministry, uh, the blessing that, that's going to be heaped upon their head. Now, let me ask you this. Uh, here we are on Spotlight on ministry as a, a ministry of the Interdenominational Assembly of Churches USA. Now, talk to us about uh, your, your decision uh, to uh, be a part of, of the Interdenominational Assembly of Churches, how that came about. Okay. Um, I came on board uh, under, under you, and Bishop Craig, yeah. uh, Bishop Foster, uh, my pastor was a part of it. And uh, at that particular time, anything, I felt like anything that my pastor was a part of, I needed to be a part of it. He told me to come uh, and to check it out and to see. And, and, and when I got there, I realized it was a fellowship and we were all fellas in the same ship. I believe you used, to, you used to say that all the time. We just fellas in the same ship, ladies and gentlemen in the same ship with the same problems, the same adversities. But I believe it was the pastor, the pastor one evening uh, that Bishop Cray uh, had, uh, was, uh, he was doing it. And he was doing the pastor, the pastor, and he was explaining. And he was talking about how ministry works and, and how he felt uh, the need sometimes to talk uh, to some pastors or talk to somebody, but he didn't have anybody to talk to. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the greatest challenges I find myself sometimes is that having someone that you can confide in, a man that you could talk to, that's not going to tell your business all over town. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah to his great name. I think I said something right there, but amen. <laughs> when, when, when you're talking to people, you want to have a, a, a sense of, 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 of confidence in them and when I when I, we talked at uh, that pastor the pastor we shared some things and I have never heard it repeated never heard it repeated and and I felt the camaraderieism you know uh, during that time and I, and I just felt the, the, the closeness of the brothers and sisters in Ayat uh, I thought it was a great, a great opportunity to be able to share with brothers and sisters and talk to people on a different level because you can't talk to your members. Amen. Amen. You cannot, you cannot talk to your members. Amen. About your personal things, about things that you're going through and dealings, uh, your dealings, uh, because a pastor has to be strong. Even if you're weak, you got to be strong. If you sit, you got to be well. <laughs> So, you know, we were able to share some things and, and just deal with some things, talking with pastors like Pastor Mahone, Bishop Simmons, Bishop Craig, and, and Pastor Barnes. It was just, it was easy. You know, that's the, the Commodore said, easy like Sunday morning. That's yeah. how I felt and yeah. being a part of IAC. It was just easy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, that, that's, that's our main goal. And I, I tell the story all the time because Bishop Craig and I, uh, he started Craig Memorial way before I started Revival Tabernacle. And I'm telling you, man, if not on Sunday night, sometime before the sundown Monday, <laughs> my phone was ringing or his phone was ringing. So we can talk about what them Negroes did or didn't do. <laughs> you need it. And I'm ready you need to it give yeah, I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready, man. I'm ready to catch a plane, get a one-way ticket out of here, because I'm I, I can't do it. They're gonna make me say something and do something that ain't Amen. that God ain't even heard of. 
<laughs> but um, and that started the ball to rolling, where we would we would do that. And I said to him, man, we we're not the only ones dealing with this. We got to find a way to reach out to others and 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 just go to breakfast and go to lunch and mm-hmm. and that's how we got started. Just just the pastors getting Amen. together, fellowshipping, and and uh, we would eat. There was a couple of times. Uh, I don't know if you, you were at one of those meetings over there on Six Mile, the late Pastor Arthur Gooden, uh, Grandfather's, whatever that restaurant was. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Man, we was over yeah. there so long, I ate twice. <laughs> <laughs> we was over there so long that day, he had them to shut the restaurant down. And I ate breakfast and lunch, but we was there so, <laughs> so long. But but uh, uh, it's, it's what we love. And then uh, I reminisce of uh, the late Dr. Charles Alexander. Yeah. yeah. Grove, when we would have those early morning meetings and oh, yeah. we would have breakfast and, and all of those great times. And they, they were really transparent oh, yeah. enough to tell us just mm-hmm. where they were and, and, and how they made it. Uh, 20, 30, 40 years mm-hmm. pastoring uh, 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 people and trying to get them on the Lord's side mm-hmm. and uh, juggling their families and juggling their jobs and juggling uh, 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 the people and really trying to be a, a, a upright, straightforward leader uh, for the people of God. Uh, mm-hmm. and, and I say all the time, that's something that we're going to get back to doing uh, which is pastor to pastor, where we can have that time where we can just uh, go in conclave behind closed doors and just just talk and pray together and share one with another. Uh, and we thank you for that, sharing that testimony uh, of your connecting with uh, the family. I, listen, uh, our time is almost up, but I want you uh, to take this moment uh, uh, as the Lord will lead you and uh, the Lord give you a word of encouragement or exhortation for the body of Christ. I want you to take a few moments and just uh, follow the leader of the Holy Spirit and give us something from the Lord. Amen. 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 Um, there's a scripture. There's a scripture in Isaiah 43, Isaiah 43 and two, it simply says, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. You know, (laughs) that scripture kind of reminds me of what we're going through now. Amen. We're going through the water, we're going through the flood, we're going through uh, changes, but God told us that he would be with us. He would never leave us nor forsake us. He told us in his word that I'm your shepherd and you shall want for nothing. I'll lead you beside still waters. I'll restore your soul. I'll lead you in the path of righteousness for my name's sake. And yea, though we might walk through valleys of shadows of death, he said, I fear no evil for I'm with you. My rod and my staff, they will comfort you. I'll even prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. I'll anoint your head with oil and your cup will run over. And surely goodness and mercy will follow you. I'm thankful to God for goodness and mercy. I'm Mm. thankful to God for the scripture where he says, I am with you. It requires great faith and strong character during this time to be able to go through these great adversities that we're going through. Amen. It, 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 it takes faith. It takes, a, it takes a deep faith. And listen, sometime during these, this pandemic and during these challenges, you're going to be disappointed. You're going to have some disappointments. Disappointments are going to come, but don't be so dismayed that you be ready to give up. Trust God's track record. Hallelujah. Every time I think about, you know, giving up or or throwing in the towel, I think about God's track record. 
I think about <laughs> how Daniel was in the lion's den and it made a, made a pillar, as the preachers would say, made a pillar out of the lions. I think about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in a fiery furnace, how they looked in and saw four men, and the other one looked like the son of God. I believe that God is in the midst of all this that's going on. Yes. And yes. I take courage. I mm. take strength in the fact that I know that trouble don't last always. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We may endure for a night, but joy oh. will come in the morning. And I'm looking forward to it. I'm not going to let these adversities, I'm not going to let these burdens, I'm not going to let anything separate me from the love of God. I'm going to trust in him, and I'm going to trust on his word, because he said, I am with you. I will lead you and guide you. Trust in me with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding, but in all of your ways, acknowledge me. And I shall direct your path. And I'm looking for God's direction. I'm looking for God's Holy Spirit to come and to show us and to lead us, to guide us into what he would have us and where he would have us to go. I'm looking forward to it because I know he's with me. I know he's with me every day, all throughout my challenges, all throughout whatever I'm going through. I know God is with me. Mm. And I know he's also with you. Amen. Just trust him. Trust and believe. God is with you. He'll yeah. never leave you nor forsake you. You shall seek me and you shall find me when you search for me with all your heart. Keep on searching, brothers and sisters. He right there. <laughs> He's right there. Keep searching. Yes, Keep searching. sir. He's right there. Then he going to give you the desires of your heart. Mm. Hallelujah. Once you find him. Thank you, Bishop. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, oh, Pastor, man. for being on and sharing with us. I'm glad. Amen. Yeah, Amen. thank you. Opportunity and time to come together. All right, Amen. watch your tone now. Watch Amen. your tone. You sound like you get <laughs> now you're raising your voice a little bit. <laughs> getting a little loud. <laughs> yes, sir. Well, listen, Pastor, tell us, let, let everybody know. Uh, your worship times, your schedule, yes. your Bible study, and uh, location of your church, and Amen. you're gonna be on preaching tomorrow. Yes, so sir. Let yes. Us know. Uh, we we are, we are at uh, five five seven Benton, uh, in the heart of Detroit, with the heart with the city in our minds and in our hearts. Uh, we we love the city of Detroit, and we love the people of Detroit and the people of God. We're right there at Greater Shiloh Baptist Church, right in the Brewster Homes, right off Mac at 75. And each Sunday morning, we're there uh, at 11 o'clock virtually. Amen. 11 o'clock worship experience virtually on the Greater Shiloh Facebook page. Uh, you can join us each Sunday uh, at 11 o'clock on the Greater Shiloh Facebook page. Also, also, we have our Zoom Bible study. Amen. You want to connect with us? Amen. Just uh, shoot us a text. Uh, shoot a, you know, uh, a text, and then we will allow you to come and to join in our Bible study, our prayer time. Uh, all of those things are open and available to you. Uh, if you so choose to be a part of it, just contact us. Uh, amen. DM us. Send us a message on Facebook. And we will get that information to you so that you can be a blessing and you can be blessed uh, by the ministry of Greater Shiloh. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And uh, Pastor Mahone will be preaching tomorrow. And Pastor Barnes, uh, give us, while you all are on, give us your service times too as well. Uh, Pastor Mahone. Uh, our service time is... Uh, Quarter to 11, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll start the service. Actually, we have devotion from quarter to 11. 11 o'clock to 11.30, I'll be preaching. So it's about one hour uh, service every Sunday morning. Uh, praise God. Where are you located? 8712 Cloverdale. That's in uh, the township, Ferndale, Michigan, right off of uh, Wyoming Avenue, uh, right off of 8 Mile area. Now you'll be on, uh, give them the name of the church. You'll be on YouTube, uh, right? Yeah, YouTube, God Grace Missionary Baptist Church. All right, tomorrow. 
at 1045, God's Grace YouTube. Pastor Barnes. Amen. Uh, in his presence ministries, we actually are going back into the sanctuary tomorrow. All right. Practicing the CDC guidelines. Uh, Amen. Six feet, everything is six feet apart and separated. Sanitizing stations, uh, temperature stations. Um, yeah, 26500 Grand River, uh, Redford at the corner of Lexington. Grand River between Beach Daily and Inkster. Worship time starts at 10 a.m. So we will be in the sanctuary tomorrow morning. Um, uh, capacity has been reduced to uh, 25%, which is right around 20, between 25 and 30 people right now. So that's what we'll be doing tomorrow. We'll be in the house tomorrow. Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise Amen. God. And listen, friends, those of you that are, we want to thank you all for your comments and jumping on. Uh, just see Pastor, Pastor Angela Stallworth. Uh, uh, just jumped on greetings uh, to her today. And all of you that shared comments, listen, we want you to know that uh, if you missed any of this, anybody that jumped on late, it'll be on the Interdenominational Assembly of Churches USA page. And then uh, you can go to YouTube. It'll be on our YouTube channel. And we thank you for joining us today. Pray for IAC. And listen, we want you to uh, hit the notification bell so that anytime we go live, uh, you'll get notified to join us in what we're doing here live on Facebook and YouTube. Thank you, pastors. Thank you, Pastor Gray. Bless you, bless you. Us. And we, we praise God. Uh, we're going to pray and we'll be gone. Father, we thank you for this privilege now. We thank you for fellowship and sharing with the man of God. Thank you for uh, choosing to use him in such a time as this. Thank you for the ministry of Greater Shallow Baptist Church, God. And we ask your blessings upon him now. Continue to go before him, lead and guide him. Bless he and his wife, his family, the church family, God. And whatsoever his hands touch, we pray that you cause it to prosper. In the name of Jesus, we pray that you give him clarity of vision. And God, we pray that you give provision for the vision. We pray that you bless all of us now. Keep us in good health, uh, spiritually, physically. And then we pray for financial miracles and blessings that we might continue uh, to do ministry in such a time as this. And bless on tomorrow as they go forth to minister your word. And we pray, God, that men, women, boys, and girls that may not know you in the parting of their sins will come to know the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. Now bless us now in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God blessings to bless you guys. You. Bless you. And we'll talk soon. Blessings to you. Bless you, sir. Amen. Amen.